Welcome back, Circuit fans, to the January 2018 2v2 tournament. We have round six, second to last round. We're going to have a match between Quartz Destiny Killer and Lynx against Kingstat and Pyrostasis. Once Kingstat gets back. But this is going to be on violence. Wow, I haven't seen that map in a 2v2. That's a five way FFA map. I'm curious if that's going to go, actually, because it. Is it. Is it going to shuffle or. Is it just going to be like. Everyone's stuck in one of the five spokes of the wheel. That'll be interesting. But yeah, it's really a question of how this is... Gonna... Well, okay, I guess this is not going to start immediately. But we are going to see... Huh. We are going to see the whole setup so far. I mean, just... I was asked to point out that... Cortex Killer and Lynx did manage to beat Google Frog in 400 in round 3... I'm fairly certain I actually watched that. But just in case, Lynx asked me to point that out. I was like, yes, they did. Well done. Actually, very well done, because that's kind of difficult. But at this point, these two are going to be fighting kind of a tough match, because Sainik and Topkak... Sorry, not Topkak. It's Cortis and Pyrostasis... Sorry, Kingston and Pyrostasis and Cortis and Killer and Lynx. They're both kind of lower in the bracket. So if they win two... And both 400 and Google Frog and Black Touching Kshatri lose theirs. We could have some tiebreakers between them. But at the same time, they're also probably the most even match of the matches that are currently available. And now the King Stat is back. We can move on with it. Get this going. And actually get a proper game because this is... This is going to be the second to last, potentially third to last match for this entire tournament. Really comes down to what happens with, I guess the same and top act to an extent, but really 400 and Google Frog. If 400 and Google Frog and Black Touching Kshatriya win both their matches, and Black Touching Kshatriya against Mordor and Pokedrills, they probably will. 400 and Google Frog against Anir and Catastrophe, so that's a little more up in the air. But if that happens, then they fight each other. The winner wins. There's your tiebreaker. But we'll see what happens. It really comes down to who wins their matches. Like if Anir and Catastrophe win, they actually go up to 4-2, and they end up being one of the ties. Although they also fight Saniac and Topkak, so then that also potentially breaks the ties. It's kind of funny how this has actually worked out in almost a Swiss-like way, just by coincidence. Like, just so happened. Because this wasn't Swiss. This is round robin. This is, this is not based on previous results. That has no bearing on where a player sits or a team sits in the rankings, or who they're fighting in later matches. That was predetermined at the start of the tournament. It just works out that we have a couple potential tiebreaker matches already happening in round 7. But for now, we have instead the standard match on violence. Which, I mean, that map, it's an interesting map. It's got lava in it. Like, the lava hurts, just so you know, that that is real lava. Even sounds like real lava. Honestly, it looks like it's been modified slightly, too, because the last time I saw, I think it was this map, I think it was Violence, it might have been a different map that was similar. It was... It didn't work out the same way. Like, you had... You had the map, and it was more just the spokes, and there was a lot of lava, but I might be thinking of a different map, where it was like the lava was spewing up and particle effects were everywhere, and it was kind of cool. But it also was extremely dark. This one, not so much. This one's actually pretty good for being light or dark. Although I noticed it's also very shiny. Which is interesting. That's not water. That's just, I think, the map reflect. Yeah, it's the map reflect texture. Hmm. I wonder why it was used in a map with rock, with molten rock. It's more of an ice thing, but okay. That's a cool effect for sure. Anyway, Kingstad Power Stasis and the northeast side. And where are their opponents? Ah, the northwest side. So, very close to each other. I believe these were shuffled. And it was team based shuffling. So, this is going to be potentially a quick match, just considering how close the opponents are, but at the same time, they rotate around the other side. There's a lot of room available. We could be here for a while. Anyway, off the bat, King's Tag over Shield Black Factory Power Stasis for Spiders, even though there aren't very many hills, but there are some. At the same time, Colokibot for Lynx, and Cortis the Hiller wants shields. But what they're actually going to do with that is a little unclear. Lynx going in for the Glaives just to scout out, figure out where their opponents are. And that is similar for Pyrostasis, wants to send fleas all across the map to know what's happening. While at the same time, Kingstad fairly confident they're not going to be attacked from the northwest, because really, odds are, they're not going to be attacked from the northwest. 
It's just that they are. And they know it. And yeah, that's kind of ridiculous, but hey, there you go. Kingstad and Pyrostasis know exactly what's happening. And... Or I guess Team Kingstad now. I guess that's how we're doing it now? Oh yeah, because it's, it's a five-way thing. So it doesn't know what the start locations are relatively in terms of position. So has to go off name. So Team Kingstad is going to be having to deal with that stuff. But I think they have the advantage of knowledge. I don't think Cortez the Killer or Team Cortez the Killer knows. No, they have radar. They, they know. No, the, the knowledge is well understood. But still, Kingstad... They do have the Shieldbot Factory right there. Cortez the Killer does have their own Shieldbot Factory as well on the right side. But it looks like, instead of trying to go for that, it looks like Cortez the Killer is going around... Okay, Cortez the Killer is going around the opposite way completely. Not entirely sure why, but their prerogative, I suppose. While at the same time, Kingstad looks like they're trying to attack from the opposite side. I think they don't know that Team Cortez the Killer knows that, the, that Team Kingstad is over to their southeast. I think what they're trying to do is deceive, which is not a bad strategy. Like, throw their opponents off, make them think, oh, they must be across the other side of the map, which it seems like Cortez the Killer, or rather Lynx in particular, does think, or at least checking for. At the very least, most of their glaives are out of position, but at the same time, these bandits will not be able to deal with the damage to the commander. They will be able to take out this Lotus, though, and possibly take out the metal extractors. I wouldn't go over the factory if I were them, but I'm not them. However, they are going to get the radar tower, or one of the radar towers, one of two radar towers? Yes, get both radar towers. Same time though, Cortez the Killer did have enough radar warning to know that the Redbacks were coming. Not a bad idea like to come in with the flank like that, but didn't quite work out in terms of timing. Still though, Cortez the Killer, or rather Lynx in particular, going in managing to get a flank somewhat of their own. Pyrostasis commander does not have anything to stop this. Six glaives are more than enough to kill an economy commander, but that's not their target. In fact, I don't even think they know it's there. No, they don't. They have no clue. So, blissfully unaware that there is, in fact, a commander they could easily pick off. Looks like Lynx is just going to be able to deal some economic damage to Team Kingstad, although, at this point, Kingstad and Pyrostasis have more than enough money. And they're doing fine, economically speaking. The problem, however, might be the factory being lost. These glaives could easily take care of it. There are no defenses in there, which means there's nothing stopping that from being destroyed. But at the same time, the glaives are far more concerned about getting rid of as much economy as they can, and quite frankly, I agree. That is the way to go. As it stands, however, it doesn't seem pretty, it doesn't seem easy, or, or pretty, for Kingstad in terms of how they approach this. Especially having lost their entire factory, the Shieldbot factory's down, all the glaives that destroyed the Shieldbot factory are also down, but that's not really relevant. However, the economy construction over to the eastern side of the map is massively relevant. That is giving Team Kingstad a huge advantage. Oh, Obsidian apparently reflects light, which is fine but I don't think this is Obsidian. It's not dark enough. Like, the redness isn't... It, that's part of the diffuse texture. That's If it was black, like just jet black with reflection, then I'd say, yeah, that's Obsidian. But like, jet black with like really sharp edges from time to time, that's Obsidian. This is not Obsidian. Not sure what this is supposed to be at all, actually. But I digress. Back to the game itself. We do have a fairly strong contain coming from King Ted and Pyrostasis, teaming up on that one. While at the same time, a good amount of scouting coming from Pyrostasis in particular, while, again, the entire team just taking the southeast side. Just keeping Corte Team Cortez the Killer pinned to the northern side of the map, which is working decreasingly well. It, I mean, clearly Lynx is deciding, okay, I'll expand over to the southwest. That's where I need to expand. That's the open point. And indeed it is. There's a lot of room that Cortez the Killer has, sorry, that Pyrostasis in particular has to get around this. But not much, really, when you think about it. They just can't go through the lava, because death. Actually, do they have death? Well, they weren't in the lava, so who knows? Doesn't really matter. If you don't go in lava, you're fine. That's how lava works in movies. Unlike in real life, where if you're anywhere near it, you immediately burn to death. You don't even need to touch it. Not so in movies and games. These spider bots are fine, as long as they are not in direct contact with lava. Possibly if they are in direct contact with lava. I don't know. Maybe they're made of tungsten. That would be a very strange building material to use for robots, but it would survive lava. Actually, I'm going to think of it, a lot of metals would survive lava just fine. As long as the melting point is above about 1,000 degrees Celsius, they're good. 
But what's not above 1,000 degrees Celsius, or at least in terms of melting point, is Lynx's commander. Although the explosion from it soon will be, if it weren't for the fact that it managed to jump away. Its jetpacks are certainly at 1,000 degrees Celsius. But it doesn't matter, because it is melted. And with that, Team Cortez the Killer loses 4 metal per second, loses a massive defensive ability, massive defensive asset over the western side of the map, possibly losing their entire Clokebot factory. If it weren't for the fact that these redbacks are moving in, but that's with the support of the rogues hitting that factory. And hey, why not get rid of a Clokebot factory? Get revenge for losing the Shieldbot factory earlier, which is just now being rebuilt, actually. Kingstat hasn't had a factory this entire time. And that has allowed Cortez the Killer to move in with some rogues and put Kingstat's commander under a bit of pressure. Now, King said, much like the first game we saw on Lonely Oasis, they are again going for a heavy commander push. But this time, there's a far better flanking support and a far, far stronger economic base to back that up. So, really, King's Dad isn't just going for an economic push or for a commander push the way they did that one game, which, granted, did actually work in the end. But it wasn't so much a try to come from behind victory. They are way ahead. They're just trying to solidify their victory, but, yeah, it's done. And... Yeah, the other games, first off, the other games were done, and also the... I picked this match because it was the most even match, not because it was the one to necessarily show who was going to win. The other matches, I figured were kind of decided off the bat, and round seven is going to be the winner match. Like, that is going to be the match between the people who... Yeah, Black Touching Chatter and Goop Frog and 400 all won their matches, so next round is going to be the tiebreaker match. Like, it's round seven, but it happens to work out to be the tiebreaker match for 400 Goop Frog and Black Touching Chatria. But as it stands, Kingstown and Cortez the Killer, not likely to hold very long for this. It's really, again, it just feels like it came down to the fact that Kingstad took into account where their opponents were first and took the short path to flank and then used that to keep the contain, used that to keep them scared. Because really, it's not like Lynx didn't have an opportunity to expand over to the western side of the map. They had plenty of opportunities. It's just they were clearly afraid of their opponents flanking them and dealing with those expansions as they were being built up. Well, at the same time, Kingstad and Pyrostasis didn't care. They just went down south and took everything. Now, the one thing, though, is it's not... I guess it's... Hang on, not one thing. It's not over. It is over. It's totally over. I was about to say it's not over, but it's... I don't see any way Cortez the Killer can pull this back. Even getting rid of Kingstad's commander, that's a lot of metal. That's 4,000 metal. But right now, that's the attrition advantage between the two teams. Not even counting the fact that the economic advantage is so huge, so disparate between everything that it doesn't even matter. Like, if you look at the metal advantage here, metal produced alone is double. Metal used, same thing. Unit value is four times that. Right? Team Kingstad is four times that of Team Cortez the Killer. I... Damn it. I meant to hit Alt F1, I hit Alt F4. I am... I am foolish. That was... Uh, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I hit that. I don't know why I did that. Ah! Uh. Wow, okay. Sorry about that. Sorry about my gross incompetence with the keyboard. Wow, okay. Well, uh, guess that's... I mean, it was pretty clear how the match was going to go when I could go back to it and check it, but, like, uh, yeah... Kingstad and Pyrostasis have it. Like, no question about it, but that was... Wow. I... Even I just subconsciously gave up on it, apparently. Oh yeah, it is over. Oh no, it's not over. It's, it's still running. We could still check it. It's not over till it's over. And apparently I am jerk. Well, my apologies. We're going to get back to that just to see how it, clean, how it cleans up. Although, like I said, I'm fairly certain that it is going to clean up in Kingstown and Pyrostasis' favor. Because, really, what else is there? Like, there's... They have so much going in their favor right off the bat that there's nothing. Alright. Might as well show what's happening in the game, because, like, eh. I, wait, I, there it is. Because at least it's something to look at as we see a recap of the game as it went, and see that, yeah, even from the beginning, the economic potential was so huge on Team Kingstad's side. Huh? 
Wait, why is it paused? That's weird. I got further than this. Oh, maybe I guess it's just surrender, I suppose. That's... That's very strange. Okay, well, sorry about that. Apparently the match just got all wonky, so... Yeah. Okay. So that was... That. That was very strange. I didn't mean to do that. I wanted to press Alt F1 to change the fact that, to change what was showing up, and for whatever reason, I hit my index instead of my ring finger. It's like, wait, no, it's not. It's, why Alt F1? No, F4, that's what it is, right? No! No, that's not what it is. I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, round seven is going to be Blood Touching Shadow versus 400 and Google Frog. I will do my best to not hit Alt F4. At any rate, Kingstead and Pyrostasis at the very least managed to get third place as a result, and could actually get... No, I can't hit Tiebreaker. This is, this is Tiebreaker. There's no way out of this. This is potential for third place from Kingstead and Pyrostasis, if they can maintain their record. Or maybe tie for third place. Or tie for second place, actually. Actually, yeah, if Kingstead and Pyrostasis win this next match, they will be tied for first place. And they're against Major Mordor and Pokedrill, so we might have a tie for second place match. I'm not sure how that's going to work. Regardless... First match is, of course, going to be between the... Oh, that was... I'm sorry, I didn't even have the right round thing. <sighs> anyway, first match is going to be between the... Uh, between the tiebreaker. It's going to be Google Frog and Black Dutchie... Sorry, Google Frog and 400 and Black Dutchie and Chatria. That is going to be coming up in a few minutes. But for now, small break, so stay tuned. <laughs> 